First and foremost, this video is going to have spoilers for season two of the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. You've been warned. For my video for Umbrella Academy season one, I defended and bashed all the characters because I felt that people were very divided on like certain elements of the characters. But for season two, I'm just gonna judge all the Hargreaves siblings' choices. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Swell Entertainment. And I really liked the first season of the Umbrella Academy and I also pretty much really liked this season of the Umbrella Academy. They shortened the episodes a little bit, which I truly think worked in their favor. The pacing was much better. As far as like emotional development for all the characters, I don't think what needed to happen did happen, but I feel like we can really chalk that up to the circumstance. I mean, it's kind of hard to deal with your childhood trauma and all of that when you're thrown into a new timeline. Not entirely though, because I'm here to complain about things. In the outro clip for my last video on the Umbrella Academy, I made a joke about how I was originally going to rate them all based on how many therapists I thought they needed. And then I decided against it because I thought that would be adding to like the trauma Olympics narrative. This time I'm gonna be rating them on a one to 10 score using umbrellas. I know Diego was kind of trying to dismantle the numbers system and subsequent manipulation tactic that Reginald forced on all the Hargreave siblings. We go in there as a united front. No more number one, number two bullshit. Now on it's team zero. Diego, hun, you couldn't have come up with something better than Team Zero. Even just like saying like we're a family, like that would have worked too. You didn't have to have a team there. I know he was doing that to like try and dismantle that uh, notion, but it's just easier to go through them based on their numbers. So we're gonna start with number one, Luther. Luther, I defended your actions in season one, a lot of it could be chalked up to the trauma and manipulation that your father enforced on you. My God, did you make it hard for me to defend your actions this season? Arguably, he did worse things in season one, but in season two, though he did make some bad choices, very bad, um, most of his choices were just incredibly dumb. You don't have to be a stereotype, Luther. You can be better than that. Newsflash, Luther, it shouldn't take Vanya not remembering anything prior to landing in 1963, for you to realize the role that you played in her meltdown and also to realize that killing her would solve nothing. You shouldn't be the one to apologize. What did you do to me? I know you were a daddy's boy, but considering what he put you through leading up to season one and everything that you realized in season one and all the emotional trauma that you went through in season one as a subsequent result of his actions. I'm very curious what the thought process was for thinking that tracking him down in the 60s, two decades before he even adopts you, would be a good idea. This is gonna sound crazy. Reginald Hargreaves, I am your son. I understand, you know, just escaping the apocalypse, being separated from your siblings, and, you know, wanting something familiar. But you had to know that that was gonna be a bad idea. For some reason, Luther went back to Dallas. They don't really go into why or when he decided to make that trek back, but he starts working for Jack Ruby. You can make fun all you want, but I take good care of Mr. Ruby. Like Ruby, the Jack Ruby, the gangster who shot Oswald. Yeah. Once Five shows up and tells you that, hey, we brought the apocalypse back, um, most likely you're all here. Luther says that he doesn't care. What's wrong with you? I just told you the world's gonna end in 10 days. Yeah, well, you're always saying that. I know you're upset, but that is so fucking dumb. Having a full on meltdown because you found out that Allison, your sister, is married to a very nice man and then going and throwing the fight that Ruby set up for you, which is who's paying your bills because you want to feel some physical pain to match with your emotional pain is sad, but also very bad and incredibly creepy. Did it feel good to rip off your shirt in front of Reginald at the family meeting? Look at what you did to me. Look at it. It didn't look like it felt good. Someone is absolutely going to be annoyed at me for this, but to be dumb enough to be manipulated by both young and old five when they are both experiencing the seven side effects for existing too close together in the timeline is so dumb. <laughs> five warned you about all the side effects and brought you along to make sure that he kept his shit together, but you still let them manipulate you, especially old five, in part because of your daddy issues. This isn't me judging choices. This is just a question I have about Luther's strength in season two, because in season one, he seemed to have gotten stronger once he'd gotten the uh, strength from the monkey 
blood or whatever the heck it was, the super monkey serum, let's go with that. First episode for season two, when Five sees the nuclear apocalypse that has started because they've messed up the timeline because Vanya's a bomb. We see him physically take the brunt of a missile and stuff and he's leaping and being strong as shit, you know? But then at the end of season two, when Diego is stuck under a tractor, it seems like it's difficult for Luther to lift the tractor and keep it up. I know tractors are physically fucking heavy, but like that shouldn't be a problem for Luther in this state. And you could argue that he was out of shape and that's why he was struggling to do it. But considering that we see him consuming copious amounts of protein, specifically eggs, and training in season two, it doesn't really make sense for him to be out of shape in this time. So yeah, what was the deal there? I give Luther two out of 10 umbrellas. One of those umbrellas is a pity umbrella because though he made incredibly dumb choices and arguably bad choices this season, I do feel bad for him a little bit. He still has too much shit he needs to work on. Diego, we got a little bit of growth from Diego this season, but I firmly believe that 1963 was not good for Diego. Everything involving his crusade with saving JFK and cutting off Lee Harvey Oswald's trigger finger was a bad hill to die on, especially when he knows from Five how important preserving the timeline is and and how you shouldn't be making any drastic changes, i.e. saving JFK. Also, he brought it up at least once every 10 minutes of screen time, like, Diego, come on, you need more hobbies. Also, you kept bringing it up in the psych ward. Turn on fantasy about President Kennedy's what got you committed. Look, they person. are going to kill him. They're gonna shoot him in the head, right here in Dallas. Okay. Diego, I know they slowed down doing lobotomies in the 60s, but I'm sure they would have made an exception for you. I'm not going to judge Diego for developing feelings for the handler's daughter because he didn't know. However, I am judge him for letting Lila tag along when he knew she was at least a little bit unstable. I'm also going to judge him for sleeping with her after his father stabbed him. Diego, if it's bad enough that you can't go and hunt down your father again, it's probably not a good idea to have naked fun times. Also making a move after she told you that she had found her parents murdered, you deserve the smack. Diego not only turned his back to Lila after he found out she was the handler's daughter, but he was also dumb enough to take a drink that she offered him after that. Now you're unconscious, Diego. How does it feel? Good job finding your way around the commission to the infinite switchboard though. Also, I love Herb. I want more of him in season three. I'm Herb. I'm an analyst. I'm Diego. I have a knife. Diego is also the one who finds out that it'll once again be Vanya who kicks off the apocalypse in 1963. Stopping Luther from grabbing the handler's briefcase so Lila could take it because you love her was stupid. If Luther had grabbed the briefcase, you probably could have potentially convinced Lila to stick around, push the family narrative a little bit more like, oh, she was terrible, but we're okay-ish, join us. But now Lila is a free agent. She has free reign over time. That's a hell of a long distance relationship, Diego. Are you sure you're up for that? Six out of 10 umbrellas for Diego. Even though his crusade to save JFK was getting tedious and he often lost the plot. He was the only one who was constantly ready to move into action and was actually trying to find some form of a plan. Even if his plan didn't line up with fives or anything like that, he was actively trying to do something versus just kicking it and being comfortable sticking around in 1963. Probably would have been rated seven umbrellas, but considering he was big dumb for being so obvious about what he was doing in 1963, six. Allison, Allison, I adore you. But just a question. Do you remember Claire, your daughter? I know you do because you mentioned her in episode seven and then also at the end of episode 10. I should go find Claire. Oh, come on, one drink. You just seemed more torn up about losing Luther than your literal child the majority of the season. For Allison to not only be married to someone involved in the civil rights movement, but to also be involved in the movement herself is probably bad for the timeline. As she knows how a lot of this does play out, being as she's from 2019, there's a very real possibility that this could have a negative effect on the timeline, especially as she took on an organizing role and her name could be published, photos of her could be published, she could be arrested, you know, like there's things that could potentially affect the timeline. This is only a bad choice because it's bad for the timeline. Also, Ray is arguably perfect and I am a fan of anything involving Allison in a loving relationship that is not with Luther. I am the luckiest man in Dallas. Is that right? That is right. I know the season would last five minutes if Allison used her rumors more, but God, I feel like if she just used them earlier on in the season, she could have saved her and Ray so much trouble. And she like wanted to, she started to. And I like that they definitely went into more of her hesitation about using her powers in this season. And they also showed how her ability could consume her. In season one, Allison avoided using rumors because she had lost her marriage over rumors and also lost full custody of her daughter in that time. She also lost her ability to speak for a year and almost died because she tried tried to use a rumor on Vanya. Also liked that they pointed out that she was glad that everything she had in 1963, she had actually earned 
and it wasn't her using her rumors to get it like how she had done in her career as an actor and potentially in her marriage in 2019. Using a rumor to save Ray was the right thing to do, but she should have expected that Ray was gonna freak out and run off because that would freak out anyone. Remember, communication is important in any relationship, even if you are a superhero from 2019 married to a man in the 60s. Because the impending apocalypse, she finally tells Ray everything. I'm not sure if telling Ray about all the progress made because of the movement in 2019, especially telling him about Obama being president was a good idea because of the timeline, but he seems to take it less as like, oh, like this happens anyway, and takes it more as like, so what we're doing here matters, which is good. So it's probably not a great choice, but I think it's an okay choice, but mostly because Ray is again, perfect. I know she doesn't belong in the 60s and she had to go back to 2019 and she can't take Ray with her. And I wanna say that this is a good choice, but like, I, I don't want to. Again, Ray is great. <laughs> I won't say it's a good or a bad choice. This is a sad choice. I'm gonna give Allison a seven out of 10 umbrellas. She found her footing very well in the 60s, despite everything against her, including not having a voice. She married Ray, which probably bad for the timeline, but stellar choice for her development as a human being and trying to get away from Luther, I would say. But then again, she did in fact go back to Luther. And again, I'm a little salty that she didn't bring up Claire until like the last three episodes of the season. Klaus, Klaus both broke my heart and pissed me off this season. He pissed me off mainly for his treatment of Ben. You are your brother's only mouthpiece, not to the world, but to your siblings. And you routinely ignored him, pretended like he wasn't there. And that was just rude. Klaus, is Ben here? Oh, uh, no. No, unfortunately ghosts can't time travel. Are you kidding me? Accidentally on purpose starting a cult was on brand, but a bad choice, Klaus. Probably fucked up the timeline in multiple ways. There's a new cult on the books named Destiny's Children. Also, you can't have a cult without followers. So that's a whole mess of people who aren't out doing what they would have been doing if you hadn't shown up in the timeline and started a cult. Abandoning your cult and driving back to Dallas to hunt down a man that you fought in the Vietnam War with who hasn't even enlisted for the war yet because you're in love with him to try and prevent him from enlisting in the war and dying. A sad choice, but a bad choice. Showrunners, you know this isn't what I meant when I said that I wanted more of Klaus and Dave in season two. So this is why you dragged me away from San Francisco so you could rekindle your little Just Vietnam fleet? Stay out of my business, Casper. Your business is wrong, Klaus. Just it's selfish. Ben, You're just gonna confuse the kid. Obviously this was a bad choice, especially when Klaus just made Dave very scared and uncomfortable, including in front of his uncle who just made him enlist anyway. However, I believe that Dave actually enlisted in the Marines and not the army. So maybe Klaus did save his life, but I don't know. The timeline is fucked regardless. After Dave punches Klaus in the face, he takes a running leap off the wagon after being sober for three years. Relapses happen. It is a bad choice. However, I'm not gonna fault him for getting sloshed when there's an impending apocalypse because he didn't know yet. Thank you, Klaus, for calling out Allison on her and Luther's creepy dynamic because the two of them seem to keep forgetting. Aren't we all brothers and sisters? I... Well, technically. It's... Technically, if you use the F words, use the word technically. You're already in trouble. <laughs> okay. Klaus is a lot of people's favorites, so people are gonna be mad when I say that I'm gonna give him four out of 10 umbrellas. Colts, even accidental ones, are bad. I know you love Dave, but you made a young man very scared and uncomfortable, and that wasn't good. Also, you were a dick to Ben the majority of the season, even if you let him possess you. Five. To be fair, let's include him jumping all of his siblings in time, even though he knew he wasn't strong enough to do it himself, because he messed up his own body. Like, it was probably not gonna work out for him jumping all of his siblings, but he knew that. And Yes, it was a split decision because the apocalypse was gonna happen. They were all about to die, but also he knew that it probably wasn't going to work. Is this nitpicking? Yes. Giving Elliot the Frankel footage, even though you knew it was from six days into the future was a dumb decision, even if it did give you good information. Are you or are you not an enemy of the people? That's such an really depends question on the people. to think about, yeah. I think threatening Lila and letting her know that he was onto her was a bad choice. Only because now she knows that he was on guard and yeah, she can play off like, oh, I don't care, like what's the point? But like now she knows that he's onto her. Like I feel like he could have gotten away with more if he'd like hid that more. I don't care if you're the best assassin to ever come out of the commission. To go after Lila alone after you've caught her eavesdropping is stupid. At least tell someone where you're going. I know five was the one options for getting his family home and that that's why he 
agreed to the handler's deal for killing the board, but I still think like he should have known that she was gonna screw him over in that deal based on their past track record. I just wanna take one quick moment. Though I do like the scene of Five going after the board. He is not your daddy. He is a teenager. I don't care that he himself said that he is daddy. I'm the daddy here. How's it going? Bad. Stop it. If you're weird and you really need to rein it in, look up Aiden Gallagher. He's the guy who plays Five in some of the weird stuff that he's done. The kid freaks me out. I'm not going to complain about Five going after old Five, even though he knew the possible ramifications and side effects of existing that close in time to his own self. They really did seem to be out of options at that point. Having a teleportation fight with himself was fun to watch and also hard to avoid considering old Five did think that killing him was the best option. Eight out of 10 umbrellas. In my opinion, he did the most work this season Season, and he risks going crazy by being in close proximity to himself in the timeline to save his family. He would get more umbrellas, but I feel like he was a much bigger dick to his siblings this season for some reason. Time travel side note. Young Five gave Old Five the right calculations to return to 2019, which should have allowed him to maintain his old man body. However, at the start of Luther and Young Five making their plan to go find Old Five, Young Five makes it very clear that he still needs Old Five to return to 2019 so that he doesn't snap out of existence because that timeline still needs to happen. Young Five stays young for the rest of season two. So did Old Five not get the calculations right and still end up looking like his teenage self when he got to 2019? Is that a side effect of the briefcase getting ripped in half? Also now that Old Five has gone again back to 2019 and that's restarted, but he now knows that that Five from the original 2019 is in fact back in 1963 where he came from and he knows that the 2019 stopping with the apocalypse doesn't work. Is that now going to affect how old five deals with the 2019 apocalypse and the events of season one? Is that why we get the Sparrow Academy in season three? But no, that wouldn't work out because like the timeline, the they go back to the day after the apocalypse was supposed to happen. So it's probably a result of them, you know, meeting Hargreaves and everything. And oh my God, I hate time travel. Ben, we got way more of Ben this season. It was distracting. Ben is great and Justin Min is too attractive. It's hard to concentrate. It's hard for me to judge Ben's actions when he's getting excited over dirt and he looks like this. His ending inside of Vanya's mind made me tear up and now you're telling me that in season three they're giving him a scar, fringe, and a bad attitude? How am I supposed to concentrate? 10 out of 10 umbrellas for multiple reasons, including saving Vanya from herself and stopping the apocalypse. Vanya. Vanya does get some slack because she remembers nothing pre-landing in 1963. Getting hit by a car, losing your memory, only to shack up with the hot mom that hit you and be a live in nanny is a solid choice. I'm torn on this one, so let me know what you think. But after Luther reveals to Vanya that she in fact is the one who caused the apocalypse, and then Luther punches a wall because Vanya isn't gonna leave, and then she leaves. And Just tell me that when I need you, you'll be ready. You're our sister and a member of the Umbrella Academy. Like it or not, that's who you are. But that's who I was, okay? New timeline, new me. Drives off back to the farm. I do think this was a bad choice, but also an understandable reaction. She knows this is a bad choice because the apocalypse is coming and her siblings are still separated. But also let's keep in mind that she doesn't remember everything and this is all a lot to take in and she just found out that she inadvertently causes the apocalypse in 2019. So, however, this is still a bad choice because she now also again has confirmation that not only does she have powers, but she has incredibly unstable powers that are also dangerous. And she is now going back to the farm with Sissy and Harlan and could potentially be putting them in danger from herself. But it also makes sense that she would want to run to some place that she feels familiar with. Vanya tells Sissy everything and tries to get her to leave with her. Arlen overhears and runs away. Vanya runs after him and finds a pawn and she fears that he has drowned because she sees his toy floating on top. She is able to use her powers to lift the water up and save Harlan. I'm not going to judge her for giving Harlan some of her powers, which is what brought him back to life because it was genuinely an accident. And also I'm not going to bag on her for saving Harlan. Does that make sense? Comforting Sissy about her life and then kissing her and then more. Arguably a bad choice because of timing, but I don't care. You can judge me, it's okay. I love women. Putting off joining her family to return to 2019 to go tell Sissy goodbye is a bad choice, but then taking the time to convince them to run away with her after Carl has just threatened them. She didn't know that Sissy had left a note, but I mean, I feel like that was kind of inevitable based on what Vanya had seen while living with them, the hold that he had on Sissy. Bad choice because you missed the deadline. It wasn't really your fault that you got arrested and then tortured, but 
it did lead to that. The scene inside the white violin where Vanya has now remembered everything and is seemingly given up is an understandable choice. Leading up to this point in season two, she had a mostly vague understanding of what she had actually done in the first season. And now she is confronted with all of her memories all at once. And that is a lot to go through, not only remembering everything, but experiencing that fear of your own power and yourself again. Saving Harlan a good choice. You really couldn't know or predict that she hadn't taken all of her powers, but let's see what happens there. Also wiping out all of the commission's field agents because they were shooting at your family. A necessary choice. Vanya gets seven out of 10 umbrellas. Despite not remember anything, she did take everything that was told to her remarkably well, all things considered. However, the routine running off to be with Sissy and Harlan was sweet because love and all of that, but also it was dangerous, especially when she knew that she was in fact a danger to them potentially. I'm including Lila because this is my video and I make the rules. Her actions in season two are arguably bad, especially when compared against our protagonist of the hard grieves the entire season, but when you see her dynamic with the handler, it's understandable her actions considering she seemingly was raised to not question anything her mother told her or had her do. But also falling in love with your mark is always a bad idea, even if it's Diego Hargreaves. Lila was one of the 43 babies born on October 1st, but not one of the ones that Reginald Hargreaves abducted. Sorry, fuck, bot, wait, adopted. But this brings up my point from my last video on the show. What happened to the other kids? Obviously at the Sparrow Academy, it appears that Reginald did in fact not adopt the Umbrella Academy and instead adopted six of the other children and Ben and created the Sparrow Academy. But then that gets into a whole new timeline clusterfuck because if Reginald didn't adopt Luther, Diego, Allison, Vanya, Klaus, Five, then are they not existing in the current timeline? Like where does the reset happen? Because based on what Five told us, if like he didn't jump back to that timeline, he would snap out of existence. But then did that timeline ever even happen now in the current timeline that they are back into? Should they snap out of existence? The rules of your time travel are incredibly inconsistent. And that's gonna be it. Overall, I liked the season. I think the shorter episodes worked out really well for pacing and I'm excited for season three. You should not wait a year to do it again. However, we're in a pandemic, so, who knows when you guys are gonna be allowed to film things again. I'm excited to see the Sparrow Academy, especially if they're villains. That'd be so much more fun. I also wanna see what the cube does. But that's gonna be it. Did you watch season two of the Umbrella Academy? Did you like it? What was your favorite character? What's a choice that you thought it was dumb that I didn't bring up or what was one that you disagree with me talking about? I don't care what we talk about in the comments section because it helps the algorithm regardless. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also support my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here and that's gonna be have a lovely day. Goodbye. Why do I feel like someone's gonna be annoyed that I didn't include tax evasion as one of Klaus's bad choices? Thank you, Adam, Alan, Elise, Brighton, Beyond, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Exo, Effectless, Hopeless, Jason, John, M, Jonathan, Jordan, Joseph, Kenneth, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lee, Lisa, Logan, Manga, Matt, Matthew S, Mean Lord Red, Michael, Michael J, Nathaniel, Pat, Pryloff, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Simon, Stephen, Timothy, Tom, Victor, Wendy, William, Zendry.